Hey everyone, this is John Ruggiero, and I am the developer of the a all-in-one preparation application. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about professional practices in the workplace. Some of this information is tested on in the exam, but most of it is just aspects of our jobs that I think it's important to touch on and keep in mind when we're preparing for the beginning of our career in IT. So the first aspect of professional practices that we're going to touch on is appearance. Um, we live in a casual world uh, dominated by sweatpants and blue jeans, but at the end of the day we are IT professionals. And even though some of the jobs that we might do may seem casual or easy to us, they can be very vital to our clients, such as saving vital tax information or preserving family photos. Um, and these are things that can be very important to the user. Uh, and as such, we need to maintain a professional appearance at all times. Um, IT guys in general, tech guys in general, sometimes have a stereotype associated with them that they're unkempt or smelly. And while most of us know that the, the people that we have interacted with in IT aren't like that, uh, it's really just to keep in the back of your mind to you know keep your hair combed and make sure you shower and wear a polo and khakis so that you can maintain a professional appearance for not only you but your company and for the interactions that you have with every client. Another aspect of professional practices that's important to note deals with passwords. Uh, as an IT professional you're going to be dealing with a lot of different passwords and a lot of different users and a varied amount of machines every day. It's important to think about how you would feel if someone was working on your machine. You wouldn't want a user to retain your password information after they're finished with your job. So if you are working on a problem and you suspect that you are only going to need this user's login information once, maybe it's better to have the user type in that login information themselves rather than you knowing that the information. Um, more likely you're going to be needing to log in and out of the computer multiple times and in this situation, it's generally better to ask the user to change to change the password temporarily, or you can set a temporary password and then have them change it back after you're done. The point is, when you're done with the machine, that user should feel like it's still their machine and they can do their work on the machine without feeling like they're going to be checked up on. Uh, it's funny to think about, but even at a business or at a job, you take ownership of the machine that you're using. You may not own the machine, the machine may be whatever, you may be the secretary to business and it may just be the secretary's computer but for the time that you're there you're going to consider it Susie's computer. And as such it's really important to apply the golden rule to everything that we do. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I don't know about you but I wouldn't want someone else using my machine when I'm not around or touching things around my desk that um, aren't theirs before asking. So when you're at a user's workstation, just try to keep in mind that this isn't your office, this isn't your desk, and just try to be polite and be courteous with the user and always ask permission if you feel like you're going to be encroaching on their privacy. So the main focus of this video deals with the professional practices associated with professional communication. Um, as an IT professional, uh, it's always important to be assertive in your communication. Uh, this doesn't mean being aggressive in your communication, but in many cases, uh, the problems that we deal with are caused by user error or neglect. As a technician, you're meant to show users the error of their ways without creating anger or conflict. I have a definition here that says, assertive communication isn't pushy or bossy, but it's also not the language of a pushover. Assertive communication first requires you to show the other person that you understand and appreciate the importance of his feelings. So you're going to want to use statements such as, I know how it feels to lose data, or I understand how infuriating it is when the network goes down and you can't access your files. The user may have improperly accessed the network or messed with their network drives to cause this error, but you pestering them about how they messed up isn't going to fix the issue at the end of the day. So that leads, ties in with being respectful in your communication. Uh, it's Every communication that you have in life revolves around respect. You don't do the user's job, but you should respect the job that they have. Um, I have another definition here that says communicate with users the way that you would like them to communicate with you were the roles, were the roles reversed. 
Don't assume the, mo the world stops the moment you walk in the door and that you may immediately interrupt their work to do yours. You know, although most customers are, you know, very happy that you're there to fix their problem, you're not the end-all be-all of their day. You need to come in and seamless seamlessly fix their problem and leave and leave the user feeling that it was a positive experience. So this leads me to my next topic that is something that I've dealt with a lot personally and that's effectively communicating your technical knowledge to a user. Um, say a user describes a problem to you saying that their computer has a blue screen of death um, and you find out that there's a problem with one of the drivers on the computer and you have to roll back the drivers and do all kinds of work in the registry to fix the blue screen of death. Um, but the user doesn't understand what you're talking about. They don't understand what a registry is. They don't understand what a driver what a driver is. So you need to be able to talk to them and effectively communicate what you've done to their machine uh, without using what a lot of people call techno babble. So for me, the first step in this process is to ask the user objective questions about what's happened. So rather than saying, what did you do to the computer to screw it up, you can ask, has anything changed between the last time this program or this machine worked but until now when the machine isn't working that would help me diagnose this issue? These types of questions generally elicit much more positive responses than aggressive questions that put the user on the spot. Um, a lot of users that are having technical issues may be embarrassed that they messed up their computer. They may be hesitant to admit guilt, but at the end of the day, both for you and the user, you just want the computer to be fixed. So you want to ask those questions to elicit as much information as you can, but you don't want to put the user in a corner. So after you ask those questions and you work on your you the problem and hopefully you fix the problem, it's always important to talk to the user about what they might be able to do to prevent the problem in the future. So again, you just want to try to use layman's terms. So if someone is having a problem with the network drive, they disconnect their network drive, maybe you can illustrate to them in Windows Explorer how a network drive gets disconnected and say this may be how the drive is getting disconnected. So if you see this screen, then make sure to click off. If you right click on the drive, make sure not to disconnect the drive from the network. I think that important commu that commu effective communication, excuse me, is the most important aspect of our jobs because IT is generally regarded as a department in many companies that is only called on when vitally necessary. Uh, for a lot of businesses, IT uh, IT is if everything is if all the users are are happy and all the computers are working fine then you're doing your job and no one talks to you and it's only when something is going wrong that you're in the forefront of the business and as such on a personal level with the user when you're communicating with the user you want to make sure that that user feels comfortable interacting with the IT department interacting with you as a technician uh, if you are aggressive with the user or effective uh, communicate ineffectively with the user the next time that user has a problem say it's a very important problem. Uh, their machine is uh, randomly turning off on them, it's overheating, something like that, or it, they're deleting files on the server accidentally. You know, these, these are things that, that happen every once in a while that can have an immediate effect on the number of machines available, the hardware, of, uh, the hardware available, the network, or maybe even the server, the servers itself. Um, and if you're aggressive towards the user and they don't feel comfortable with interacting with the IT department, they may not come to you the next time that they have a problem. They may hide the issue from you because they feel that they were talked down to last time or they're embarrassed or they don't want to admit their guilt. And this can lead to much bigger problems. The machine may die when all you had to do was replace a CPU fan or files might be deleted on the server that for some reason aren't backed up and you're set behind multiple hours of work, multiple days of work. So you just want to make sure that you talk to someone as if you both have the same amount of knowledge on the subject. We're IT people. If we were talking about biology to a biologist and they were using all kinds of specific scientific words, we wouldn't understand what they're talking about. So uh, just as they speak to us in layman's terms, we need to talk to our users and our clients as simply as possible to effectively communicate our technical knowledge.
the last aspect of professional communication that I want to touch on is something that I'm finding less and less common in the workplace, especially in IT, but I think it's vitally important to fostering a healthy environment, and it's the art of the follow-up. Uh, if you have an interaction with a user and you fix their computer, even if it's as simple as I can't connect to the internet because I deleted Internet Explorer, um, it's just so vital to simply call them on the phone if you are not around to talk to them in person and just say hey uh, is your issue fixed have you had any issues similar any other issues that I can help you with is there anything that I can help you with today so that your experience is the best experience that it can be this gives the customer a chance to detail any special issues that they've encountered uh, that may have arisen arisen and it just adds that final touch uh, that ensures that they're going to call on you again when they encounter a technical problem. And this is just, I can't stress how important this is um, in creating a link between the, inf the IT department and the other departments in a business. And as previously stated, if there's a break in these departments, it can lead to huge problems for both the IT department and the rest of the company. So now I'd just like to run through some questions or example situations so that we can put our knowledge uh, into practical use. So the first question would be um, which of the following would be most appropriate for the workplace? Uh, clean pressed khaki trousers, clean wrinkle free t-shirt, clean wrinkle free polo shirt, and clean pressed jeans. Uh, so if you had to select two, uh, it's safe to say that the khaki trousers and the polo shirt would be the most appropriate for the workplace. While your t-shirt and your jeans may be clean, they don't elicit a professional environment and the user may not take you as seriously, you may not take your job as seriously because it doesn't feel like work, it just feels like you're hanging around with a friend. Um, the next situation is, say you're manning a help desk and you get a call from Sharon in the accounting department and she's lost a file that she claims she knows is saved to her hard drive. Uh, so which of the following statements would direct Sharon in the most efficient manner to open her my documents folder so we can see if this folder is actually here. Uh, so these are the specific sentences that you would say. Uh, a. Sharon, check my documents. B. Sharon, a lot of programs save files to a default folder, often to a folder called my documents. Look, let's look there first. Click the start button and move the mouse until the cursor hovers over my documents. Then press the left mouse button and tell me what you see when my documents opens. C. Probably just defaulted to my docs. Why don't you open Excel or whatever program you use to make the file and then open a document and point it to my documents? D. Look, Sharon, I know you're clueless when it comes to computers, but how could somebody lose a file? Just open up my documents and look there for the file. Obviously, B is the correct answer in this situation, and, and these are things that may seem you know, redundant to us or simple, but a lot of tech, technology professionals or IT help desk analysts uh, get aggravated with their users. Uh, they don't take the time to ask open any questions or they put blame on the user and this just fosters an unhealthy environment. So it's always just important to take it slow, step back, realize what you're dealing with and communicate in the most efficient manner possible. Uh, when is it appropriate to yell at a user? A abs absolutely never. You, even if you get aggravated, uh, if the user is doing the same thing to their computer multiple times a week that's causing the same error. Uh, at the end of the day, it's your job to fix it. Um, you can do the best that you can to assure that the user knows what's happening to cause this error, and you may tell them how the best practice is to avoid the error in the future, but if they keep doing it, it's never okay to get aggravated with the user or put blame on the user because they you want to respect them just the way that you would want to be respected if they were coming to you while you were working. Um, another situation that we didn't touch on 100%, uh, let's say that you're troubles troubleshooting a computer software problem on Sharon's computer in accounting, and you're talking to her and she's describing the problem to you and your phone goes off and you look at your caller ID and it's your boss. Uh, so which of the following is the most appropriate action for you to take? Uh, pick up Phoebe's phone and dial your boss's number. This is not a good option because you use uh, the user's uh, items without asking. Uh, you interrupt the interaction that you're having with the user. You create a disjunction in the communication between you and the user. Uh, C. Wait until Phoebe finishes her description and then ask to use her phone to call your boss. Uh, not a bad option. Uh, maybe not 
as good an idea as the other options uh, because you just generally they're not going to want to use the user's phone or the user's staple or any any device that they have on their in their workstation uh, when you have the option to use a personal device instead. Uh, C, excuse yourself, walk out of the cube and use a cell phone to call your boss. Still not the best idea because you're interrupting the description that she's giving to you. She could be uh, giving you vital information on how to fix the issue. Uh, and then D, wait until Phoebe finishes her description. Run through any simple fixes and then explain that you need to call your boss on the phone. This is the best because it um, allows you to finish your interaction with, with Sharon where she uh, tells you everything that you need to know about the situation. You can run through any simple fixes so that you may be able to fix the problem, problem instantly uh, and you can just take as much time as possible to call your boss on the phone. If not, just run through any simple fixes and then excuse yourself politely and say, I need to make this call. I'll be right back. Uh, please excuse me for the delay. So these are just, you know, some various situations that you're going to, you will probably encounter during your career in IT. Um, many of us keep in mind these things on a daily basis in our general communication, but it's always important to remember uh, that you should treat others the way that you would want them to treat you. Uh, and for me, I think the most important part of professional practices in IT is to effectively communicate your technical knowledge to users of lesser technical expertise. Uh, I think that if you can always keep in your mind that you need to use layman's terms and simple conversation and foster a healthy environment of commu communication, uh, you will create great links between yourself and the IT department and other departments of the business. You will have better reviews when you're working for a user and they report on the encounter. Uh, you may be noticed by upper management. They say that you have great communication skills, you work well with others, they may fast track you for uh, uh, an advancement in your position. At the end of the day, it's just important for you to realize that everybody's on the same playing field when you walk into a room to fix a problem. If you keep this in mind, not only will you pass your A-plus exam, but you'll have all the tools necessary to begin a beautiful career in information technology. Thank you.